Today, I am showing two examples of how to compute RAND index given the outcome of a clustering result, say K means, and ground truth or benchmark labels. I have made videos on RAND index theory before. I suggest that you watch those videos after watching this one. I am making this video to help my students with their upcoming midterm exam. Here, there are two problems on RAND index. Let us start with the one at right, because this is the easier one. Given the result of k-means and the benchmark labels, can you tell me the RAND index of the clustering result? Here, you have k-means clustering, and this is the expected result, or the benchmark or ground truth labels, okay? There were five clusters for all five points. Each point is assigned to a cluster. Cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3, cluster 4, and cluster 5. Notice that here in the benchmark 2, you have cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3, cluster 4, and cluster 5. Whatever was called cluster 1 by k-means is called cluster 5 by ground truth, or the benchmark. Whatever was called cluster 2 by the clustering result is called cluster 4 in benchmark. So every cluster of the clustering result just changed to another cluster in benchmark. So in terms of clustering result, really it is a 100% match with the benchmark or the ground truth. All the clusters only change their names. You can do that calculations of true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative, all those pairs, you will end up with exactly 1.0 RAND index. That is a perfect match. OK, now let us take a look at the problem at left. Here is an outcome of a clustering algorithm. In this problem, K means. These are the ground truth labels or the benchmark labels. For this, we cannot directly say what the RAND index value is. Let me tell you the answer. It is 0 0.6. Let us see how we can compute it. OK, when we compute RAND index, remember that the RAND index formula is true positive plus true negative divided by true positive plus true negative plus false positive plus false negative. This is how you compute RAND index for clustering evaluation when you have the ground truth labels. We need to know what true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives are for the given clustering context. We look at the agreement of each pair of points being in the same cluster or a different cluster. So in the clustering results, here K means, we see that these two rows are in two different clusters because they have two different labels. When a pair of rows are in two different clusters, we call it a negative pair. A negative pair of points are not in the same cluster. If these two rows had the same cluster labels, then we would call the pair a positive pair. Now we are calling the pair a negative pair because they're in two different clusters. This row is in cluster 1 and this row is in cluster 3. So it's a negative pair, OK? So is it a negative pair here in the benchmark? Yes, they're in two different clusters. That is, the pair resulted in a true negative pair. I am reiterating. Two points are in two different clusters, said by the clustering algorithm. Hence, the two points are considered a negative pair. In the benchmark also, the same two points are in two different clusters. Therefore, the negativity of the pair is supported by ground truth. Hence, the pair is a true negative. So, in true negative, we have found one pair. We record it. Then we look at another pair. That is row 0 and row 2. Is this a positive pair or a negative pair? Right. It's a negative pair. OK? Now, let us look at the benchmark labels, which is the ground truth. This one is saying that the two points should be in the same cluster. Notice they have the same label, OK? So this negative pair, according to the clustering result, does not agree with the benchmark. Benchmark says that the pair should be positive. That is, K means has falsely detected the pair as negative. Hence, this negative pair is a false negative pair. So we have found a false negative. Let's record it. We're now considering the next pair, which is this one. Is it a negative pair or a positive pair? It's a negative pair. So now we'll check whether it is a falsely negative one or a truly negative one. The two points have two different cluster labels in the benchmark. That means the negativity we saw in this pair in the clustering result is a truly negative one because our benchmark is also saying that they should have different cluster labels. So we have found another true negative, recording it here. We'll check the next pair. OK, 
Next pair is this one. Is it a positive one or a negative? It's a positive pair because they have the same cluster levels. So we look at the benchmark. And in the benchmark, it is saying that they should be in two different clusters. So it's a false positive. OK, so in false positive, we record this one. Now notice that we have gone so far with all pairs involving row 0. OK, we have gone over all pairs that include row 0. We will do the same for this row, row 1. So this is a pair. Is this pair a positive pair or a negative pair? Right, it's a positive pair. Very good. Here we can see that it should be in two different clusters. The benchmark says so. So the positivity detected by the k-means clustering algorithm is a false positivity. So we found a false positive. OK? So now we'll go to the next pair, this one. In this one, we have found a negative pair. The benchmark says the two points should be in two different clusters. So this negativity discovered by the clustering algorithm is a true negative. We record this true negative by including another tally mark. Next pair. OK, this pair is also a negative pair. In benchmark, they have the same label. That is, there is a disagreement between the clustering outcome and the ground truth. So the negativity that we have seen in the k means clustering result about this pair, this negativity is actually a false negative. So on fn, we put this one. OK, now notice that we're done with this row. Now we will deal with this row and all pairs that it forms with the rows that appear after it. This is a negative pair. We see an agreement in the benchmark side as well. It says that this pair should be in two different clusters. So this is a true negative one. So we have another tally. Next pair is this. And this is also a negative one. OK, let's see if this is a negative one here. Yes. So this is also a true negative. So we have another tally. We are done with this row. Then we have this row. For this one, we have this pair. This is a negative pair. And our benchmark is also saying that there should be two different clusters. So this is a true negative one. Do we have any other pair left that we missed? No. We have gone over all pairs. We have computed TP, TN, FP, and FN. We can compute RAND index. TP is 0, TN is 6. That is, we have found 6 true negatives. In the denominator, we have 0 plus 6 plus FP, which is 2. Then FN is also 2. So it's 6 over 10, which makes RAND index 0 0.6. OK, so our final answer will be RAND index is 0 0.6. One question I am sometimes asked is, when you go to the next row, do you compare the bottom rows only? Yes. That is how we find all pairs. We can write two for loops that go over the row indices. If the first for loop has the index i, then the second for loop starts from i plus 1. So we always pick up one row and we create pairs with the rest at the bottom. That way, we make sure that a pair is not repeated. Happy exam!